Um, today I will give you an overview of uh, some uh, tools based on metabolomics that we think that can contribute to get a better understanding of the pathophysiological mechanisms involved in the CG family of diseases. Metabolomics, for those of you that are not familiar with that, uh, is a new approach that promises to have a significant impact in many different fields. We use it in my laboratory for getting a better, a better understanding of biological system under normal and pathological situations, and also for identifying correlated biomarkers of disease onset, progression, and response to treatment. Um, I just says that uh, metabolomics is a new omics, but first, I should first explain what we mean by omics approaches. And I think that this slide will, you know, will convey the idea to you. Uh, as you know, Classical approaches to science are based on the isolated analysis of the system components. So basically, we study a concrete gene or a particular enzyme, a specific organelle. Um, however, the omic approaches take a completely different perspective of realities. So uh, they are based on the analysis of the system as a whole, and the expectation that you know analyzing the system in that way will provide a better uh, way to understand the function of a system. Uh, there are many omics approaches, including genomics, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, and more recently metabolomics. By metabolomics, we understand the quantitative measurement of all the metabolites present in a particular biological sample. Uh, taking into consideration that metabolites represent the final answer of any organism to biological changes, then it makes sense that the evaluation of the metabolites could be a good reflection of the physiology of an individual in normal or pathological condition and also in response to treatment. Uh, the metabolic profile is closely related to the genotype but also to the phenotype of the individual. And this basically uh, is able then in, a, in that way to uh, contain a high, a high quality of information. A very interesting property of metabolomics approaches is that they can be uh, used to analyze a wide range of biological samples. So although most of the studies are focused on urine or plasma or cell samples, we have performed studies in sweat, in tears, in amniotic fluid, in uh, CSF. So many, uh, you can think of any biofluid containing metabolite that can be analyzed using metabolomics. Uh, the advantage of that is that the techniques used for metabolic study allow the detection of metabolite in samples containing very different physical chemical properties, as shown in this slide. In this context, a metabolite is any organic molecule that can be detected in the body with a molecular weight under one kilo Dalton or a male Dalton, 1,000 Daltons. That includes peptides, oligonucleotides, sugars, nucleoside, organic acids, amino acids, ketones, aldehyde, amine amino acids, lipids, steroids, sugars, of course, and drugs. So a drug is no different compound that you will find in the body, and actually the molecular weight of the uh, drugs normally is around 500 Daltons, so they are within the range of metabolites. And that includes human and microbial products. Why do we study the metabolic composition? Why is that interesting? Because the reason for that is that metabolites play a very important role in cell functioning. Metabolites are substrate, product, cofactor of the metabolic reaction that take place in the cells. And also, the anormal function of many enzymes translate in a, a typical metabolite composition or concentration in biofluid. That's why it's so important to study uh, metabolic composition. In fact, this is the reason why traditional clinical chemistry is based on measuring specific metabolites. So we measure glucose or cholesterol or whatever, trying to diagnose diseases. What we do using metabolomics is measuring everything at the same time, no one compound at a time. There are many different uh, experimental approaches to do metabolomics studies. Uh, we use metabolomics by NMR. Uh, it has an advantage and also some disadvantage. The internal advantage is that uh, it's a non-destructive technique, so this, uh, the sample can be used for any other thing that you, you want to do. It doesn't require extensive sample preparation, and you use a small sample volumes. Okay, uh, don't freak out. This is a very simple slide. I just wanted to say that NMR is a biophysical technique that we use a lot in chemistry. Um, it provides a lot of information. Also, structural information of the compound that you have in the, in the sample. What you get 
at the end of animal experiment is a spectrum containing many signals and the position of those signals are not random. So they are basically the position of those signals is closely related to the nature of the chemical groups and the chemical environment. Of course, uh, as I show in this slide, if we take, for example, a look to the NMI spectrum of quinine, which is a molecule that can be actually considered a metabolite because they have a very low molecular weight, you will find that that molecule, even if you are not an expert in chemistry, <coughs> it has different hydrogen atoms, and each of them resonates a different region of the NMI spectrum. That's basically what we use to identify compound when we do metabolomics studies. Of course, if you can think about this is a kind of complicated spectrum only for one compound, if you think that what the number of compounds that you will identify in a, in a biofluid, the situation complicates a bit more. In fact, you will see in the next slide that the analysis of the urine, uh, spectrum of urine sample is very complicated. Thus, in fact, it requires a systematic analysis to identify all the metabolites present in that particular biofluid. The nice thing about RMR is that basically the intensity of the signals is closely related to the uh, concentration of the, of the compounds. So basically, when you analyze when you perform a global analysis of the NMI spectrum of a fluid, you get information not only about the identity of the compound, but also about the concentration. And this is an important advantage of this technique. Uh, from a technical point of view, the process is it's not very complicated. Basically, what we get is a biofluid. Think of any biofluid, CSF, uh, serum, urine, whatever. Just place it in that NMR tube, and what we do is to perform an NMR experiment. What we get at the end, as I mentioned before, is a spectrum, and we, and suddenly what we do is to perform a number of multivalent statistical methods <coughs> approaches, trying to identify tendencies or clusters in the data. Imagine, for example, a simple study where you are comparing the metabolic profile of healthy people and diseased people. If that comparison reveals difference in the metabolic composition, then you can identify those metabolites involved in the discrimination, both from a qualitative and a quantitative point of view. And that's basically provide you with a way to diagnose diseases, for example. Um, this uh, experimental approach is having a tremendous impact in many different areas of preclinical and clinical research. We use it in my lab for many different things, and I kind of summarize that in this slide. Of the preclinical phases, it can be used, for example, uh, to characterize the motor action of drugs. So basically, using metabolomy, you can uh, identify the metabolic changes associated to the, with the presence of a drug, and you can actually evaluate the effect on the target and on other protein present in the cells. And that's basically, we use it a lot to understand or to better understand the mechanism of action of drugs. But also, at the clinical phase, you can use it for the early diagnosis of many different pathologies. You can use it for stratifying patients for different treatments. Uh, for monitoring treatment response and also for uh, patient follow-up. In this slide, each of these small cycles represent a patient, and using metabolomics, you can actually uh, identify the healthy status of each individual, is this healthy or is this disease. You can actually evaluate the response or the lack of response to a particular uh, treatment, and you can actually identify the metabolic differences between the patient who respond and do not respond to treatment. So basically, you get a lot of information out of those experiments. Uh, my lab has been working for several years in the application of metabolomic uh, to different uh, biochemical, pharmaceutical, and clinical problems. And as, as I show you here, although most of our efforts have focused on, uh, on in the oncology area. Nevertheless, all the, the approaches that I'm describing can be applied to, any different, uh, to many different diseases. Uh, the first, uh, our first initial efforts in metabolomics focus on the exploration of applications based on the characterization of different biological samples. For example, in this slide, I show you how metabolomics can be used to characterize the specific metabolic profile of particular cell type and how the, is the mechanism of action of drug acting on those cells. In this particular case, we were interested in characterizing the mechanism of action of of two anti-cancer drugs, and we were trying to compare the similarities and differences between the mechanism of action. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that uh, you provide a lot of information not only about the discrimination between different mechanisms of action, but also about the metabolites involved in those discriminations. Uh, 
A very interesting work, which I think would be interesting also to the CDG community, is the, the, the work that we have performed using cells. So this is a study that we performed uh, using metabolomics to get a better understanding of the molecular mechanism that sustain the proliferation of human embryonic stem cells. And as you can imagine, cells growing in a culture or in a plate exchange metabolite with the surrounding media. And that can be measured using metabolomics. That's what we call exometabolome. So you measure that's a chain, and you, you evaluate the direction of the flux of the metabolite and the metabolite involved in those changes. You can get a lot of information about different biochemical processes. And that's actually very rich information wise. What is in there for the congenital diseases uh, uh, disorder of glycosylation? Well, as you well know, I mean, all, the, all these diseases are characterized by different uh, cellular dysfunction. And in this context, metabolite can provide an opportunity to evaluate cell metabolism under normal or pathological conditions. Also, it can allow you to test hypotheses about the involvement of specific enzymes, and also to evaluate the nutritional pharmacological treatment. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the uh, detailed analysis of the metabolic profile, both in terms of composition and concentration of the metabolite, uh, provides a, a an unprecedented opportunity to design new strategies that can be tailored to a specific uh, pathophysiological mechanism. <coughs> Let's move now to uh, another big area of research in metabolomics, which is the diagnosis. Metabolomics is actually in becoming increasingly popular as a diagnostic tool. And the reason for that is the throughput. Using metabolomics, you can measure uh, more metabolite uh, quickly, uh, accurately, and you can get information about many different processes. We have performed many studies in, in using different biofilms, but most of the studies are related to the hemato oncology area and reproductive medicine. And I will share with you a couple of projects, although, as I mentioned before, the technology can be applied to many different things. This is a, a project focused on the characterization of the metabolic profile of serum samples obtained from non small cell lung cancer patients. So normally, this disease is diagnosed using a biopsy. And we were very interested in developing new approaches using no invasive approaches. So uh, what we found was that just measuring the serum content of metabolites, it is possible to discriminate healthy people from diseased people, but also people in different stages of the disease. We are using this approach also to evaluate the treatment response of this patient using just serum samples. In this uh, other study, we have been working a lot in myeloma as well. Uh, we did a similar study trying to identify relevant biomarkers of myeloma. Myeloma is a plasma cell neoplasm, which is currently incurable, and it's very important to, uh, to early diagnose the disease and to come up with the best treatment for each therapeutic group. And in this case, we, we saw not only that the metabolic profile of healthy individuals is different to the myeloma patient, but also that the metabolic profile of the responder myeloma patient changed with the treatment. That means that using an animal experiment that takes five to 10 minutes, it is possible to evaluate if the person is actually responding to the treatment, instead of doing very expensive or very complicated tests. Um, what can we learn about these studies uh, performed by fluids in, for CDGs? In fact, uh, as I mentioned before, <laughs> in the same way that one expect to see metabolic exchange between cells and the media surrounding the cell. It is not uh, impossible to think that metabolic alteration in the cells goes translate in a typical metabolic profile in any biofluid, let's say CSF or serum or urine. In fact, this uh, paper that came up from a study where uh, a CDG patient uh, was identified as tetrasaccharide in the urine sample of, of, of a patient. Very important thing I wanted to share with you as well is that uh, the figure on the right side, which is the fluctuation in the metabolites. And this is a very important thing. When we use metabolites to diagnose this easy, we are not only basing one metabolite. We use a combination of metabolites, what we call metabolic signature of a particular disease. So the fluctuation, the ups and downs, and the variation in the concentration of metabolites carry, carry a lot of information about the different pathological processes. And this is very important. In fact, this is a, a result that came up from the myeloma project, but this actually can be extended to any other project. Basically, what we do is to measure metabolic profile at different stages, and you can actually tease out 
where are the metabolites which are associated to the disease, which metabolites are associated as a second, uh, secondary effect of the treatment, and which one doesn't revert in the presence of the treatment. So you can get information about different biochemical processes at the same time. And I think I will leave it here. I will just now acknowledge the people in my lab and the funding agency. Um, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>